there. Before we get started working with PHP and MySQL, there's a few things that we need to understand about databases. Some of you may already have taken the class where you talk about how to create a database and the tables and fields and how to do SQL, but this is more of a refresher for those students and an introduction for students who haven't yet taken that class. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so <clears throat> what is a database? A database is basically a collection of information that is stored on a computer and in the web world it's mostly stored on a web server. And it's organized by tables and rows of records so that it can be easily, the information can be easily retrieved and updated and inserted into the database. So a database object in a relational database is a data structure used to store or reference data. And this includes things like tables, indexes, stored procedures, views, and more. Uh, for what we're doing with PHP, we don't necessarily need to get too involved in some of the more complex elements of databases. But if you were going to actually go live with a project um, and create your social network, you're definitely going to want to have a, uh, a, an experienced database administrator or learn the material more in depth so that you can provide um, information security for your data. Okay, so tables. Tables are what we store our information in and it's organized by rows and columns. So in some ways, if you've had experience with Excel, it's sort of like Excel except that everything has a every row has a unique value called a primary key. Okay, so tables are also known as entities and sometimes you'll see them referred to in your book or when you come along when you're look, looking at database resources they may also be considered entities. Most tables are named after a real-world entity, a singular noun that describes something we want to represent in the data. Now, I've been working with databases for most of my professional career, I kind of have my certain way that I like to represent data. So I'm going to share with you the way that I represent data. And sometimes people have kind of their own little mix on how they do things. I'd like to think that the way that I've learned um, has been from some really excellent database um, administrators as my mentors. And that's what I'm teaching you, so there's nothing wrong with the way that we're doing things, but you might run into some people who do things a little different. So, when I have some data that I want to store into a table, I try and think about these things from a real-world real perspective. So, if I have a social network or some sort of website where I want to track my information that belongs to my users, I would then create a table for the user. Okay, so each record in that table will have information for one user, hence why I call it the user table. It consists of rows of information of, of user data. Uh, same thing might be like, so if you wanted to do kind of like a class registration system, the easiest way to think about what you want to do is to come up with some user stories. And user stories are things that you want people to be able to do with your system. So, if you are talking about a social network, one of the things that you want is for users to register to your website. So that, that sentence itself will give us some information about the entities or tables that we want to create. If we have a class registration system, our, users, our user story might be something like a student needs to register for a class. And so you look at those sentences that you're saying in your user stories, and you circle all the nouns. So a student wants to register, register is the verb, for a class. So that means we at least need to have two tables, one table for student and one table for class. But a lot of times we need to have a table in between that connects our nouns, connects our, our, our tables. So if we have a list of students in one table and a list of all the classes in another table, I'm hoping that you can see, visualize in your head, that we need to have another table in between that connects the student with the class that they want to register for. So 
that table might be called something like student underscore, underscore class. And that provides that connection because a student is not going to have information about the class they're going to register for in the student table. Okay, so these need to stay, this data needs to be as clean and, and as pre precise as possible. All right, let's take a look. So columns and rows. Columns form the table structure. So what do you want to store in the table? And the rows actually form the content. So the columns are typically known as a field name, whereas the, the, the content in the rows is the value that that particular item in, in um, this table will contain. So if you think about this again, take a look at our user table. We've got a user table with attributes. So a user has attributes and those are things that we want to store about our user. It might include things like a username and a password. So the username and password are part of the table structure, but the actual username that they might create, um, you know, Cali student 22 um, could be their username and 12345 could be their password. Those are called the, the values that you're inputting into the table. All right, so tables allow restrictions for columns. So we can, we will want to arrange our table structure and the field names into a particular data type. So if you want to store something like a name, you are going to want to use a var car um, or some or some sort of text representation data content. If you want to store something like how many classes someone is registered for this semester, that would be a numeric data type, like such like an, an integer. If you want to store something like the cost of a product, that might be stored as a float. Okay, so it's important to know every database system that you're using has different data types, but they all pretty much represent the same things. They just might be called differently. Okay, the other thing is that every database table must have a unique name. So you can't have a user table and a user table. It has to have a unique name. And it goes to follow that every field name or attribute needs to have a unique name within that table. You can have first name in the user table and first name in the employee table if you wanted to, that's fine. Okay, so let's talk about attributes. Attributes describe aspects of the entity or the noun that we are storing data about. So it goes to follow that you can make a sentence called a, and then the name of the table, because that's a noun, has a or an something. So in the case that we've been talking about, a user has a first name. A user has a username. A user has a password. A user does not have a one, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's that one, two, three, four, five is a data representation value for a password attribute. Okay, so representing attributes. A user has a and. This is the first step that you need to do before you set up your database is really think about the attributes that you're going to need. The more prepared you are on paper, the easier it's going to be to set up your database and set up your tables and then get to working with actually coding your, your um, application. So a user has a first name, a last name, an email address, a phone number, and a city which become column names within the table. So you want to store this data in the smallest logical representation of data. So you'll notice I have phone number, city. I don't break the phone number into like area code or country code, area code, phone number. I just call it a phone number. Same thing with city. I, I would store city, state, and zip code and maybe country. I would not store just an address with that information because you're going to want to you're going to want to create SQL queries that ask questions like how many of my users are from the state of California? How many of my users are from the state of Washington? 
How many of my users live in the United States? How many of my users live in Canada? So all these types of queries that you might do, you need to have representation for in your in your database tables. All right, data. So data is what is stored in the rows of the table, and each row of data should be unique. The reason it's going to be unique is because there's going to be a unique identifier. That is one of the the rules of a relational database is that each table has to have a unique identifier. So in this example we've got ISBN number, short description, author, publisher, and price. So this is a list of computer programming books. You'll see the ISBN number is the unique identifier for this particular table. Um, this is considered a a natural key. So this is an ISBN number that's associated with the actual book. It means something for the book. But in most cases we have what's called kind of a um, like a substitute key. I can't remember what the name of it is right off the top of my head. But this is a key that we create for the purpose of enforcing that uniqueness. So when you create your user table you generally create an attribute called a user ID and that user ID will be stored as a primary key and it will automatically increment in your database as one of the functions of the database. Alright so let's just take a couple minutes here and determine if something is data or an attribute. So we have John Adams. Is this an attribute of our user table or is this data? If you answer data you are correct. Gold star. Okay, COSP38, is this data or an attribute? By the way, this is the name of course. So yes, if you said data, that would be correct. This should be stored in one of the rows of the database table. Zip code, is this data or an attribute? And if you guessed attribute, you are correct. Zip code is a descriptor for data that will be represented in our database table. Lakewood, is that data or attribute? This would be data. Give yourself a high five if you got that one correct. Phone number, is that data or attribute? And if you guessed attribute, you are correct. Student ID, this is generally a unique identifier and it is an attribute. 4901 East Carson Street. We can recognize that as the uh, part of an address but it is data that we are stored in our table. Okay now this says is this a table or is this an attribute name? One of the things that I like to do to separate my table names from my attribute names or my field names as I like all of my tables to be in uppercase letters and as we already talked about to be a singular noun and our, my attributes I like all of the field names to be lowercase letter so that I can easily see the difference when I'm writing a SQL statement. So this is a table name. Okay, first name. <clears throat> is this a table or an attribute? This is an attribute and <clears throat> it is a representation of what will eventually become a field name. If you turn this into a field name you'll need to make sure that your field name does not have any spaces in it. So you can either have it be first name without a space or first underscore name is a good way that people represent that. Okay, so let's talk about some of the attributes for this entity. So this is going to be our noun course and we are going to think about some of the attributes that a course might have. So a course could have a course name, it could have a course number, it could have um, um, how many students can take the course, how many credits, or units the course might be, things like that. So think about things that you're not going to want to put specific pieces of information like what is the 
section number of the course because if you think about this visually in your head you're going to want a list of courses so we have a list of courses but each semester we have a we have multiple sections of that course perhaps we have at least one possibly up to 20 depending on what course we're talking about sometimes we might even have zero so when we organize our tables we're going to want a table that contains all the courses that we have available but then we're going to want another table called class and that class is going to list the different section numbers the, and it's going to have information such as who's the teacher what semester is this being taught in what time okay so if you can see the relationship here some of our tables are, have kind of a parent child relationship and so course would definitely be the parent and class would be the child all right let's talk about um, <clears throat> attributes for this entity called book so think about the things that a book would have book has title has a ISBN number it has an author a publisher a publication date how many pages it contains uh, maybe a category for what the topic is so all those types of things could be book um, what the price of the book is things like that okay so that um, summarizes a little bit about databases and for your next step in the class you're going to want to you're going to want to create your list of nouns and the attributes that are associated with those so that you can start working on your database structure and that will be the the next video is how to set up that database structure if you have not had any experience designing a database before I would highly recommend that you get um, my sign off on what you are wanting to create in your database so that I can just kind of walk you through the steps and um, maybe alert you to any problems that you might have. Okay, if you've already taken the database concepts class, I'm hoping that you have some, um, some experience designing a database, but I'm happy to take a look at what you have as well. Okay, thanks. Bye.